Hello everyone, welcome back to this tutorial on IDMC. In today's session, we are going to learn very interesting thing which is available in Informatica IDMC. And that is nothing but how to import the data which is present in the CSV file using the REST call. For demonstration purpose, we are going to use the reference C60 application which is present in the IDMC. We have to make sure we are not using the on-premise reference 360 or not on-premise RDM application rather than we are going to use the cloud version that is IDMC reference 360 application. In this reference 360 application we will we'll have the various entities. In this case we can see the accounting sector, account status and the address type so on. For demo purpose we are going to use the address type as one of the entity to load the data. And the data will be present in the CSV file. We have the container named as enter files address data. If we open this address type container data, we'll see some of the existing values which are already populated in this address type. For example, address type values such as billing, home, mailing, shipping, and so on. Suppose you want to add some values to this existing list of the reference data. And that is we are going to do in this session. So let's start. So first of all, we need to identify what is the entity in which we are going to load the data. So we already identify here, it is nothing but the address type. And then we, we need to identify the container. So the container here, it's nothing but the enterprise address type. So in this container, we are going to load the data. So let's see some additional things to prepare the our REST call. First thing we need the REST call is the endpoint which we are going to see while executing this request. Then we need the header parameter. We need to pass the session ID. If you have not followed my the previous lecture about how to get the session ID, I would strongly recommend to first go through that. That will give you the session ID and we can use that session ID in this request. The next thing is needed in this case is nothing but the the body section. The body section required two parameters. First parameter is nothing but the import settings and the second parameter is nothing but the file. Import setting needs some parameters such as header line present or not. If there is nested field then what is the nested field separator? If you have the header line on which line it is present with line 1, line 2 so that number you need to give. The delimiter so if you are using CSV file, means nothing but the comma separated values, hence we have to provide the value as a comma. If it is a text qualifier, means if you have the numeric values, you want to treat as a text, you have to enclose in the double code. That's what we are mentioning. The code page, which is standard UTF-8. The date format is ISO standard. Then the container type, in this case, we are going to load the data in the code list. So we have to hard code the value as a code list. Then we have to provide the container ID. How can you get the container ID? I will show you that shortly. Then we have to mention the what is the starting row, whether it's a number 0 or 1 and so on. If the headers are repetitive, means if you have the duplicate headers in your file, you have to mention true based on the whether it's duplicate or not. Then we have to map the fields. These fields will be mapped from the CSV file to the container fields. So let's go ahead first identify the container ID. In order to identify the container ID, let me go, let me go to the reference 360 application. So first of all, you need to open the container. So in this case, it's enterprise address type. Click on open. And you will get this ID at the top, like 648 and so on. So that is nothing but our container ID. Now, the, what are the name fields which are in the CSV, uh, CSV file as well as in our entity? Those are nothing but the this name. So you have to make sure you are passing this name and code from our entity as well as what are the equivalent names in the CSV file. And that will go as the, the mapping fields which we just saw in our import setting. And then we have the next section nothing but the file where you have to select the file where you have prepared. Now let's go ahead and see the data in the CSV file. So this is the CSV file. And it has a first line as a header with the name as a name and value as a code. Now the residential value was not present in our reference data that is address type. 
and we are going to add this residential value using the CSV file import function. So we populated the name as a residential and code as a residential. You can populate any value. There is no restriction for the values. Now we have the file. We have the required information such as session ID and so on. Let's go ahead and execute the REST request. So what will be the end point of your request? So it will have your host name and after that you have the external, then version v2 and then input. If you are using different version of the reference 360, refer the documentation and get the endpoint from the document. The next thing we needed is nothing but the authorization. There is no additional parameters are needed, so parameter section will be empty. In the authorization section, you have to provide username and password. In the header section, as I mentioned, we need to pass the session ID. And once you pass the session ID, the next section comes is nothing but the body. So we have to create uh, import section, import setting and the file, these two variables. But before adding this variable, you have to make sure you are selecting this radio button form hyphen data. Once you select, you will get this form type of content where you can provide the uh, information for your request. So in the import setting, if you see whatever we discussed in our slides, right? So that is the same thing we are using. So we are going to use this container 648, which we saw in the, our previously uh, discussed item. Then we are passing the other attributes such as header, blind present, fill separator, and so on as is. And then we are providing at the bottom here the mapping. So we have the name and code from our entity and the name and code from our CSV file. But how to provide CSV file? For that, we have created this file element and just right side of this file element, there are two options. One is text or file. So you have to select the file and let me remove this existing entry. Then you have to click on this select file button. And here you have to select the file. Click open. File will be selected and you have to click the send button. Now the request is accepted. You can see the status here. You get the job ID as well as the current status. If you want to check the status of the job, you can go to the your reference six application or you can use another API called get job status. I'm going to use the reference six application to check the status. So let's go ahead and check the status of the job in reference 360. To check the status, we have to go to the my jobs, select the my jobs. And here we can see we just now executed the job. If you want to the status of the job, click on the success and you'll see how many records present in the file. There are two lines like first is the header and the second is actual data. Hence they are saying two. How many records inserted? Because the first line will not be inserted, the second line will be inserted. Hence the value is one. And guess it will give some additional details of the job. Okay, you will get the job ID whether it's a success or failure and how long it took. Okay, let's go ahead and verify the data in our entity. For that, I'll go to this enterprise address type. And I can see this residential value got successfully loaded. So this way you can use the REST API to import the CSV file in the IDMC.